I haven't really made it a secret, the fact that I've had experiences with psychedelics. And a lot of people have been asking me to make a video about this, to know more about uh, what happened and how it affected me. Probably because like some loony ex-Jehovah's Witness made a video about it lately. So in just a few minutes, you're going to know how it felt to be in at least two different kinds of psychedelics, my experiences from it, and why I consider that your experience isn't the most important part when you take psychedelics. But before we do, let me just start with a medical disclaimer. My psychiatrist knew that I was taking psychedelics every time that I take psychedelics. He knows everything about the amounts that I take. I have him to like debrief him about things when I don't really understand them or whatever. So this isn't a recommendation for you to go and do the same thing. In fact, if you just go and try them and expect to have my results, you probably will not have them. So just please check with a mental health professional before you decide that that's a good idea for you. Now that that's out of the way, let's get started. The first time that I tried psychedelics was in the forms of shrooms. I had a dose of shrooms uh, that I wanted to have. My partner was out of town and uh, she was going to be out of town for like a month. So um, I was like, oh, you know, I'm just I'm just going to take some shrooms and, you know, see, see, see what's up. I've heard that it's really good for mental health and I've always struggled with mental health. So, you know, what's the worst that could happen, right? I, it was the very first time that I tried them. I had done research on the potential effects that it could have on my body and in my mind, but I hadn't really researched how to take them. So I kind of just like grabbed half of the bag, uh, which was one dose, and just and just chew on it and just swallowed them. And it it they they weren't they weren't bad, but they also weren't good. They were very dry. It, I didn't like the flavor whatsoever. It was it, it was uncomfortable. It was like chewing cardboard. That was that was even extra chewy. So it it, it, it made me slightly nauseous. So uh, my plan was just to put a little bit of music and uh, you know cover my eyes with a with a with a with a thing and and, and just and just lay down in my bed to see what happened right but after about like 20 to 30 minutes of just laying there i started to feel very uncomfortable now i had prepared myself to be very uncomfortable mentally to face my own death, my own mortality, and all of that stuff. I that that was that was I was aware that, that could happen. This was not that. I was getting increasingly hot, physically hot, and increasingly nauseous. To the point where I couldn't just lay in bed anymore because I was so uncomfortable. So I just went to the toilet. Like after a while, I just went to the toilet and I was like, fine, if I'm gonna throw up. Fuck it, I'm just gonna throw up, right? Like this is gonna this is gonna be a bust. So I just went to the toilet, expected to throw up, and and I was I was there for like a good like like ten minutes, and my brain just started to have more and more and more thoughts. It was like someone was increasing the amount of th thoughts that I have per second, you know? But also I was getting hotter and hotter as well. So I decided to take a shower because it was the only thing that I could think of to, to combat my state of uncomfortness. <laughs> so I'm taking the shower and I'm just, I just remember thinking about more and more and more stuff. It, it's like my brain wasn't my brain. <laughs> Once I got out of the shower, I, I talked to a couple of people and I, I even smoked a joint and the joint kind of like helped take the edge off a little bit. I, I thought that maybe I shouldn't, but once I was there, I was so uncomfortable that I was like, there's nothing, there's no way a joint is going to make this worse. So I smoked a joint and that kind of took the edge off. Let me describe to you how it feels or how it felt like to me. Imagine you have a couch, your couch in your apartment or wherever you live, right? When you look at that couch, you don't see the same couch that I see. Like I see the couch the way that kind of you saw it when you bought it. But now that it's your couch, you see when you see your couch, you see the experiences that uh, the, uh, that, that that you've had in the couch. You see the little spot that you need to fix. You you see you see how it's a little bit crooked and that it's always been bothering you. You you, you see all of these things 
that you associate with the couch. You can't see the couch without all of these associations that you've already created in your head. But when I was on shrooms, when I saw the couch, I just saw the couch as objectively as the day that I bought it. I didn't see it with any kind of memories attached to it or anything. When I looked at myself at the mirror, and I did that by accident, I, I had been advised not to do it. But when I looked at myself at the mirror, I didn't even recognize me at first. The, for like a, like a fraction of a second, the fraction of a second that took to register that that was me, my brain just thought, that guy looks kind of old and kind of miserable. And for that fraction of a second, before I realized that I was looking at myself, I felt sorry for the person that I was seeing. I wish that that person encountered peace. <laughs> and it was weird because I had, I realized that I had never really felt, it was the very first time that I felt compassion for myself. And that felt very significant at the time. Now, as I told you, my brain, it was like my thoughts were just like tuned all the way up. It felt like I had been borrowed a new brain that was more powerful than mine. Because, you know, I was thinking of so many very deep things at, at the same time. But also, the connections were very different. And that brain, as I told you, didn't have all of the connections that I had with the things that I was seeing. So I had no framework of reference to describe the world anymore. And it was frightening. If somebody had asked me if I felt normal, I wouldn't have known what to say because I didn't know what normal was. I didn't know if that was my new normal. And it became frightening when I thought of my partner and I didn't think of her with all of these associations that I had. So I had all of this love and all of this, like all of this positive feelings towards her. Like I wanted her to be happy. But at the same time, I didn't see her the way that I saw her usually. So that scared me to death. And I was feeling like, oh my God, does this mean that I'm falling out of love with her because I don't see her the way that I, the way that I see her? And it was very, very disturbing, very scary. And throughout the whole trip, I felt like I needed to do something, like I needed to be doing something very important, but I didn't know what it was. And I couldn't figure it out. And it was, I learned a few things, sure. In fact, I learned a lot of things, but it was very, 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 very uncomfortable. And what was worse is that the main thing that I feel whenever I have shrooms, for whatever reason, is that I feel like my, physically, my brain, my head, it feels heavier. It feels like I'm wearing like a, a very heavy but invisible helmet. That's how it feels like. I don't know why. I've never read anything in any literature that says any of that. I don't know why it feels like that, but that's how it feels. And when I woke up the next day, I still kind of was under the influence of the shroom. So I still had like this heaviness of my head and I still was struggling to like associate all of this thoughts with like my partner and, and, and the worst nightmare that could happen to you when you're on psychedelics, it felt like it was happening to me because the worst nightmare when you're having a bad trip, that it, the worst nightmare that you can possibly have and that is, it's, it's, it's always false, is that you are going to get stuck there. That is going to be your new normality. That is just who you are now. And when I woke up after like, you know, almost 20 hours uh, of, of, of taking the shrooms, I still had those effects. So I was like, that's it. Like, that's it. I, I, it, it that, that's the new me. But at the same time, I learned so much about myself and, and about the ways that I was seeing the world. Because as I told you, I, it was like somebody had removed all of the frameworks that I used to see the world. And a lot of those frameworks were the frameworks that the cult had, had given me. Because at that time, I had just been like a year out. So I was still carrying with a lot of indoctrination myself. Shrooms allowed me to differentiate those. I had such a meaningful and heavy learning experience that 
when I went to my psychiatrist, I, I took the shrooms on a Saturday and I went to my psychiatrist the next Tuesday. And when I went there, I sat down and I just, just heavily cried for like 10 minutes because I had just realized that I had, I had felt so many things that I had to like, kind of like put them aside because I knew that I was going to see my, my doctor and I was like, oh, it's fine. You know, like I, I'll, I'll, I'll just, I'll just see him and I'll, I'll debrief, I'll debrief him and, and, and I'll handle it then. And it was weighing so heavy on me that when I was final, I, when I finally gave myself permission to look into all of that, I kind of just started crying because it had been a very, very overwhelming experience. Through tears, I just started to tell my doctor everything that happened. And we were able to work our way through. And he thought, you know, hey, shrooms are apparently not really for you. <laughs> so I was like, hey, I'm never gonna try psychedelics ever again. And that is what ended up happening. Don't don't look at the don't look at the length of the video. That 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 we're we're almost this is almost over. That being said, for like a month after that, I kind of just felt this drive to like do things. And it felt like, you know, I was doing a lot for a long time, but I kind of just ended up crashing again after a month because I was just overworking myself. It just felt like I needed to for some reason. Thankfully, like after that, like, a week after that or something, my partner came back to town and, you know, we life went back to normal. So I decided I would never have them again. Fast forward uh, about eight months uh, after I had lost uh, Suze, my, my cat, and, had, uh, uh, and that loss had pushed me into a gigantic existentialist crisis. I was deeply depressed. It was around the time uh, when I when I filmed the um, depressed video, sad video, oh, how I am sad. It should be around here somewhere. And I had been like that for months. I didn't know what to do. I couldn't. I couldn't even feel anything anymore. And I just. I just wanted to feel good. I just. I just wanted to feel good just for a little. Bit. Just for. Just for a little bit. I just wanted to feel good. So I. I again went to my psychiatrist because I was going with him anyway. And I told him, look, I'm, I'm tired. I don't want to feel like this anymore. What can I do? I, I'm tired. I, is there anything I can do? What am I supposed to do now? We've tried all of the meds that, that you've had. Like it, nothing has worked. I can't sleep. I, it's, I'm having the worst time ever. <laughs> And my psychiatrist looked at me and he said, well, I mean, the one thing that sometimes, you know, seems to like fix depression like this it are shrooms, but you didn't really have a, a good experience with them last time. And I said, yeah, no, I didn't. But I just, I just thought of that. And after I left, I just got another bag of shrooms. And I was like, I don't care anymore because <clears throat> sure, I felt horrible before, but I don't feel anything anymore. <laughs> I'm tired of not feeling anything. I rather feel horrible because then I'll feel something. If anything, if it, if it doesn't work, right? At least I'll feel something is it's the way that, that, that I thought. And again, it was half a dose. And this time I actually looked into how to have them. I use lemon tech, which is basically you, you cut you cut your shroom and then you put it into the juice of le enough lemon to be completely covered, whatever, whatever however much you 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 want to have, usually like in a small glass, and you leave them there for twenty minutes. What's going to happen is that the citric acid is going to start actually digesting the psilocybin, and that process is the process that causes the nausea. So if you do that, you get to have like a faster trip because you don't have to digest it for as long and you skip the nausea. In that time, I had such a wonderful time. I feel like I had been so depressed for so long that shrooms just kind of gave me, gave me back just the will to be alive. I didn't have a particularly meaningful experience. Again, I saw everything the way that I was and it was very weird. I expected to have like visuals or whatever. I've never had visuals, but things look very different because they looked 
in a very realistic way. I don't know how to explain it. And I've all, I also felt, again, filled with just joy to be alive. I felt, for the first time in months, I felt truly alive. And even though I didn't have like this amazing experience or whatever, I feel like that helped me more. Just having some positive feelings back inside my my head and in my body. Again, again, when you are depressed, it's like when you're having a bad trip in psychedelics, you feel like you're going to be there forever. And my experience with shrooms just let me know that... I, that that wasn't going to be the case, you know? I, I, I don't know, I, I, I wasn't planning on getting emotional with this, but it was, it gave me hope is what I'm trying to say. Hope that I was looking for, for a long time. If you've ever been depressed for a long time, you know exactly what I'm, what I'm talking about. And that's when I started getting out of this depression that I had been carrying for a long, long, long time. And by that time, just, you know, because I was a good customer to one of my dealers. He had thrown in a couple of tabs of acid. Now, I had read that acid was very similar to shrooms and acted in a, in a similar-ish capacity, but I wasn't sure. So again, I asked my doctor and my doctor was like, ah, just wait a little bit because, you know, even though shrooms like did kind of help, like acid is not supposed to be like as medical as shrooms and you, you didn't really have that good of a time with shrooms, like anyway. It wasn't like everyone else where they just see a lot of like nice shapes and, and, and they, they just they just they just get super happy. You know, you you got something out of it, but don't risk it is basically what, what, what he was saying. But I insisted because I wanted to know. So he was like, fine, all right, like we'll reduce a little bit to, uh, of, of your of your medication so you so you can try it without having the risk of uh, th there are some risks associated when you have some kinds of psychedelics with some kinds of antidepressants so th th they're very mild but he wanted to reduce them so we worked on reducing them and i had half a tab one saturday and i remember i just called my partner because i wanted to show her some videos on youtube that's when i felt the acid starting to hit because the videos on youtube felt like the funniest things I had ever seen in the entire world. And that day, that feeling did not disappear. You know, when you're a kid and recess starts, you're not thinking about your bills. You're not thinking about the test. You're not thinking about anything. You're thinking about it. It's recess time. And I'm going to enjoy the crap out of it because that's what you do when you're a kid. Kids inherently know the importance of enjoying the moment to its full capacity, to its, as much as they possibly can. They, they know that, and we kind of lose that when we're adults. But when I was on acid, I felt like that again. I felt like a kid again. Now, I told you how shrooms felt like. Let me tell you how acid feels like. At least, again, to me. Apparently, I don't have the most common reaction, so your mileage may vary. I almost felt like underwater because it felt like everything was slightly wavy. Like, I, 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 I couldn't even sit for, like, sit still. Like, I, I, I was just, like, wavy and just, like, enjoying everything. And everything looked like in high definition. Colors look far more vibrant. And I felt like I was so privileged to be able to see things, to be able to hear things, to be able to taste things. I felt this immense amount of gratitude to be alive. And I felt this overwhelming sensation of wanting to enjoy life. And one of the main things that psychedelics teach people and have, have taught me as well is to surrender yourself. I was used to making plans because it felt like I was in control when I made plans. And when plans didn't come to fruition, it disturbed me. It made me feel bad. Not just because I was disappointed, but because it, it made me almost afraid and I had never realized that I was afraid of losing control. But when I was on acid, I realized that I'm not in control. And if I keep telling myself that I am, I'm just going to keep hurting myself. It doesn't feel good. 
I learned to let go, which I had never learned before. Now, it's not like I don't make plans anymore, right? Obviously, if you want to live in this world and in this life and you, you, you know, you gotta make plans. But now I don't allow those plans to fool me into thinking that I'm under control and I am ready to change those plans, you know? And, and it's fine if those plans don't come to fruition. I, I, I don't feel like I felt before. I don't, I don't feel horrified like I felt before. I, I, I maybe feel a little bit disappointed, but I feel fine. I feel normal about it. And even though I have been going to therapy, I didn't even know that I had that issue. Shrooms to me feel like they just beat you therapy, like lovingly beat you therapy into it, right? But acid to me, it feels like a party in, in like school. And then the like the, the counselor is like, okay, 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 lower your music. Lo everyone, lower the music, lower the music. Come on, come on. Anyway, so listen, you may have noticed that you have like this issue, right? Have you thought that maybe that issue is because of this memory that we're gonna see right now? Yeah, it's because of that. Yeah, cry a little bit. Anyway, now that you, I, I just wanted to let you know because you know it's gonna it's gonna make your life a little bit better. All right, time to go on with the party. That's how acid feels like to me. It's a little bit ridiculous, but it it feels like that because I'm having such a good time, and then I have suddenly like this memory, like I just remember this thing from my childhood that I didn't even know that I was repressing, and then I see not just the trauma that I went through and not just the abuse that I went through, but also how that is affecting me in how I treat other people right now. And then I see how it doesn't have to be like that. I can just think about that, uh, that part of my childhood, admit that that part was shitty and then maybe cry a little bit because you know, it, it was shitty and I never got to mourn it and then just move on. <laughs> just, not allow that to be a part of my life anymore. So no, I've never spoken to God. I've never spoken to any other identity. I've never seen anything that wasn't in there. Sometimes with acid, if I've had like enough and I see a specific pattern, I may see like it starts to wave a little bit, but it's just, I, I, I don't even know, you know? And I feel like the most important thing that psychedelics have, have given me, uh, all of my psychedelics experiences, they've given me a meaning for life. Not that my life was meaningless, uh, but I, I couldn't find the meaning before because when I was a Jehovah's Witness, my meaning came from being a Jehovah's Witness because I was in a cult. When you're in a cult, your value comes from being in a cult. That's how it works. So I never developed a good sense of what was the meaning of life. And once you're out of the cult, you kind of don't know. And now I feel like my experiences with psychedelics have taught me that the meaning of life is to experience it. Nothing in the universe, as far as we know, can observe the universe, can, can, can explain how it feels to be the universe. We are the only ones who get to do that. And I think that that is why we are here. We are here to express that through art, through, through music, through, through conversations, through, through all of that stuff. That, that is the important part of life. The important part of life is to experience it whole. I know that, you know, you, if you may have heard that before. I, I don't think anybody is surprised by me saying that. I don't think anybody is like, oh, wow, I've never heard that before. That is a new thing. And here's the thing. I had heard that too before. <laughs> but it's like if all of your life you learn math by memorization, but suddenly somebody teaches you how to actually do math. So instead of just having to memorize all of this stuff that it's just, it's just all of these numbers that seem to have no context, now you understand it. So you don't have to like memorize and it doesn't feel like it's very complicated because now you understand how it works. So you don't need to learn everything about it, everything in math. You just need to learn the basics and then from there, everything, everything, everything makes sense. That is how it feels feels like now. Before, I could tell you that is the meaning of life. And you know, you can be like, yeah, of course, that is the meaning of life. Uh, people have told me that. I've memorized that. It makes sense to me. But after 
being on psychedelics, it's like I truly understand. I see the mechanism of how that works, and I understand that that is what gives life meaning. Now, as I mentioned up top, I don't think everybody is just going to have this experience. I think I had this experience because I have been going to therapy for a long time. I have trying to be better and become better and get better for a long time. So once all of these truths, shall we say it, uh, got revealed to me while I was an asset. Well, once I, I, I realized of all of this stuff, I was able to fully contextualize them and, and see what they meant, uh, learn to identify if they were detrimental for my mental health and have a way of getting rid of them with a good routine and all of this stuff that didn't come from psychedelics. It, psychedelics only revealed to me kind of where I was in, in life and, and, and where I should be and, and what would make me happy. But it was my therapy that allowed me to identify all of the damaging things for what they were and it gave me the tools to work on them. And I feel like once you've been on psychedelics, when somebody tells you that they've spoken to God or that they've spoken to an entity or that they visited a different world, you're like, yeah, you know, maybe you did. Maybe you did. I have experienced some pretty weird things myself. But... That's not the important part. The important part of psychedelics to me isn't the experience and the, the fun stories that you may be able to tell and, and the funny things that you may be able to see. I use psychedelics because they teach me how to be more myself. I grew up in a cult. I was told who I was all my life. I was told how to think all my life. I was told who I should look for approval all my life. And that infested my brain going deep inside with roots that I, I was not able to, to even see. To, I wasn't even aware that they were there. And psychedelics allowed me to see them and to get rid of them. It has allowed me to be more unapologetically myself and to even figure out who myself was. It has made me far less afraid of failure because it had made me understand that failure is just a part of the process. And the more I fail, the more I learn. And that's a good thing, actually. I stopped caring so much about what other people thought of me. Psychedelics have just helped me to not just heal my mental wounds, but also to find myself, find who I am supposed to be without caring about what people think, without caring what a cult think, or without replacing that cult for another group of people that I now want to get the approval of. That's why I like to use psychedelics periodically, particularly acid, because it's just, it's far easier on my mind. Even though it feels awesome, it also is not addictive whatsoever. I haven't done it in like, a month because I haven't gotten my hands on some and it just, it, it's been, it's been a weird month. We, we moved. It was, it's, it's a lot. Of, and I feel fine. You know, I feel like I'm looking forward to having it again, but I also feel like if my doctor, and I've told this to my doctor, if, if he was like, Hey, I, there's this new med that is just going to help you more than psychedelics. It's just, you can't take psychedelics anymore. I'll be like, Oh yeah, of course, let's try that. And you know, I, maybe I would never have them again. I feel like Maybe I, I'm just going to have them for a while and then I'm just going to learn enough. And I feel like I'm more than halfway there already. That being said, I kind of do feel a little bit self-conscious because you may have noticed the beard. I just tabulated all of the votes because I asked my supporters to decide whether or not I should grow a beard. And it looks like I'm going to grow a beard for the rest of the month. This is just going to get worse. So, you know, subscribe if you want to see how terrible this ends up looking in a couple of weeks because I, it, 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 it's not going away. And thank you so much to my supporters who gave me all of the money to buy all of the drugs.